the Chinese space program is a bigger fan of SpaceX than you and there's no doubt about it. Chinese startups have even been copying the company's logo, but recently one startup raised this level to something unbelievable. Look at this, the oppressed capsule. At first glance, it looks like SpaceX's dragon, but if you look closely, you can see. Notice some differences. The number of windows is not the same, the accents are in a different position and interestingly, this version does not have a service module. This mysterious capsule is called the Iolock rocket, and it looks like it will be developed by Blue Aerospace, a Chinese startup that we have already made a video about here on the channel. Today we are going to analyze this new Chinese venture and find out what it really is. Of SpaceX, Blue Origin, or a mixture of both. Well, that's what we're going to pray for. Diplo Aerospace is a young Chinese insert loss, founded in 2016, and since then reworking. A development of rockets and usable with vertical takeoff and landing technology. Over the eight years of their existence, they have dedicated themselves to improving this approach. The company's main project under construction is the Nebula 1, a two-stage vehicle. Compact equipped with NRIP-1 powered motor and liquid oxygen. This rocket will be able to carry up to two tons to the other low end. Simpler override. In disrespecting vertical takeoff and landing technology, vertical takeoff and landing technology, Diplo Aerospace is among the most advanced Chinese companies. They started with low altitude jumps, using the small prototype in 2021 and 2022, and recently moved on to larger scale testing with the first stage of Nebula 1. The goal was to reach an altitude of 5 kilometers by the end of this year, which is most likely. It won't happen. Here on the channel there is a more detailed video about this side of the company. Well, on October 23, 2024, Diplo Aerospace made an important announcement, declaring that enters into a suborbital space tourism market. And this is where the Iolock capsule rocket comes in. The spacecraft has three poles 5 meters in diameter, 4 meters high and weighs almost 8 tons. I am able to handle a maximum load of 1,200 kilograms, and it can accommodate up to 6 people. The Iolock rocket will launch atop the first stage of the Nebula 1 rocket, and despite the first version of this rocket did not have enough power to carry so much weight. They say there will be a more improved version. The flight time will be around 12 minutes. After separation, the Nebula 1 booster will return to the launch site for vertical deployment. And how many passengers on the capsule edge experienced about 5 minutes of microgravity? After that, the capsule will return to Earth, desalinating with the parachute arid, a periphery. Identical flight to Blue Origin's New Shepard. Passengers cross the line by a mile, reaching the 5 kilometers mark, which means who will officially be in space? Well, since I don't. If there is a consensus on where space actually begins, Blue Origin itself is the lactating and vibrating wilding because of this. Despite being a lousy copy of Blue Origin's New Shepard, this strategy can guarantee the future of the company. With over 1.4 billion people living in the country, China does not depend on external tourism. The cities themselves do this work. And looking at these numbers, Aerospace DIP will explore the market that few strategies of Chinese are eyeing suborbital space tourism. In the country, there are two competitors that are QS Space, which announced in 2021 the development of a similar project with entry level in operation around 2027 to 2028 and ASS Space which revealed a render of its own suborbital cover, with the shuttering who intends to start suborbital space tourism activities within the next three to five years. But the aerospace DIP is one step ahead, as it is already ready to go and almost ready to go. Use, the Nebula 1. This payload of space tourism appears to be an additional way to generate revenue. With Nebula 1. Since making this project operational is a challenge due to its low capacity of cargo, which limits many contracts with the Chinese government. For example, the Nebula 1 is small, with the capacity to carry up to 2 tons hour and put low in its weakest shelter. This capacity is considered too low to capture the mega rocket with the selections. In China, therefore, invest in rocket technologies that are usable for rocket 
small, it doesn't make much economic sense. And that's why all the other usable rockets that competitors are developing are much more powerful. However, using the Nebula 1 as a launch vehicle for suborbital space tourism, Deplia Space would open a new market for Fogwit and give it more purpose. The challenge that DIP Space will face is that it is purely a rocket company, has no experience in building spacecraft. Therefore, being successful with this new venture means efforts, especially in hiring of specialist engineers. And currently, the company is not itself a rocket generating recurring revenue. Nebula 1 is the first attempt. The other two competitors in this sector follow different lines. AZS perceived the trajectory as more aligned with the development of spaceships. The company has experience in projects for microgravity and cargo transportation. Building spacecraft is the company's specialty, hence suborbital space tourism. It seems to be a more natural step for them, compared to Deploero for example. Space but, one big problem is that they don't have their own rocket to launch their capsule. It is very likely that they will need to resort to third-party launch companies, such as Space Nebula 2. Now the third competitor, which is Space, finds itself in a completely different situation. Different. They even have a solid fuel rocket that generates revenue, but is incapable of Launch a capsule and your future rocket is only usable in 2018 or 2019. Although don't have much experience with triple spaceship projects. What is this space has differential? She has outclassed each in a Chinese science, which includes satellite manufacturing. Such as Shanghai Microsatellite. This group is working on a non-crewed cargo ship for the space station. From Hong Kong. Thanks to this possibility with the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is this space has. Good chance to obtain funding and attract experienced talent to make your initiatives viable. In space tourism, this is an important advantage that Deployer Space does not have. Indeed, Americanized for space tourism, whether in the United States or in China, good. Deployer Space has announced that the starting price for tickets will be around $200,000. This represents a value well below the prices recently charged by Galax's journey and through Blue Origin. We've known for at least 10 years. This price difference could offer Chinese space tourism companies a competitive advantage, especially since this activity is less sensitive to having in international restrictions between countries. Selling experience directly to an individual is very different from, for example, taking a satellite for the time and pit of your enemy. However, price, although important, may not be a decisive factor in this market, which is aimed at a very specific audience, the rich. Well, besides that, the Chinese domestic market although has good potential with its quantity, significant number of individuals and charter challenges. The Chinese economy is in a difficult phase and the government's policies are for the common host discourages extravagant claims to wealth, and this may limit the appeal of space tourism. In terms of the international market, Chinese companies could explore opportunities outside China, where these cultural and political challenges are less demanding. However, competing globally will require an impeccable reputation for safety. So I believe that the only challenge for the three Chinese strategies is to prove security. But in one of your opinion, it's just another crazy Chinese copy mixing the design of the booster, of the Falcon 9 with the new Shepard capsule, or actually space tourism, will become a reality in China. Leave your opinion and forget to like us, we are always together. And that's about it for today's episode, thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update, if you enjoyed watching and found it useful please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time